The key to getting the perfect darkness for your laser engraving is actually to decide in advance whether you want something that's a very dark brown like this or something that's a true black color like this because the way that you create these colors is actually fundamentally different. But the good news is nearly any shade is possible and in this video I'll show you how to run a few simple tests to help you get anything from a very light brown to a very dark brown color. Then I'll show you what I'm calling the easy button of darker engravings which makes your engravings way darker literally with the press of a button and also show you the two main options that you have for getting true black engravings if that's what you're going for. In total, I ran over 30 tests to figure out the steps in this video, and if you just follow along, it'll make it way easier to make your next engraving darker. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna run you through a few simple tests, and I think these are the key to getting those really nice dark brown engravings that we talked about a moment ago. So the first thing I'm gonna show you here is a power and speed test, also called a material test. And here you'll see that our lightest engravings are in the top left-hand side, and our darkest are here on the the bottom right. And if you've never seen one of these before or you just don't know how to run one yourself, no worries. I actually have a deep dive video on my channel that goes through step by step how to create one of these on your own. So I'm going to put a link to it up here and also a link in the description. Go watch that video first and then come back to this one and we'll continue along. But once you do run the material test, we then need to choose our favorite of these squares, which in this case will be based on two things. Number one is the darkness, which is pretty self-explanatory, and the second one is the depth because what you'll notice, and I'm going to attempt to bring this closer to the camera, on the bottom right hand side, the darkest engraving also happens to be the deepest. And so as you go to that bottom right hand corner, it definitely gets darker, but it might end up giving you an engraving that is actually deeper than what you want. So this is a subjective process of choosing the one that gives you the darkness of engraving that you want while still not going too far into the wood. And so your preferences here might vary a little bit from mine, but here I like the intersection of 10,000 millimeters per minute and 80% power. And by the way, this is a good time to mention that I am running a 10 watt diode laser for this and I'm doing all of these tests here on maple plywood. And by the way, just so nobody feels left out, I actually ran all of the tests I'm about to show you on a CO2 laser as well, and it works basically the same way. So whether you're on a diode or a CO2, this basic process I'm showing you should still work. Anyway, now let's reveal test number two here, which is gonna be under my adorable <laughs> purple post-it notes here. This, if you've never seen it before, is called an interval test. And so this is going to be the next thing that we use to get the darkness of engravings that we want. But before I explain what's going on here with our engravings, I need to just pause for a moment to pull in this silly little crayon illustration because this explains basically what interval is and this can be helpful in understanding how this is going to help us darken our engravings. So if you haven't seen this before, interval basically is just describing the space between lines in an engraving. So when a laser operates, it's making a series of side-by-side -side lines. And if your interval is too low, then you'll get a bit of overlap in the middle. You can see with the crayon, I kind of made a dark line in the middle, and that's what happens when your interval is lower than sort of this part here, where they're perfectly side by side without touching or overlapping, but they also don't have too much space in between. And so for the purposes of darkness in an engraving, if it's too high, you get too light of an engraving. If you get here in the perfect zone, it's gonna be a nice even engraving. But with a darkness consideration, you might actually like to make it a little bit too low because overlapping does darken it. The downside of this is it can make it a little bit uneven. So this is just a little primer on what the interval is and why it matters for darkening your engraving. Now let's look at how we actually get a test grid here that is giving us the different options for our interval that we can use on this laser. But before we get into Lightburn, I wanted to quickly let you know about my laser bootcamp, which is the structured course that I put together to help beginners to quickly start making cool laser projects like these examples you see here on screen. Now, obviously with enough time and effort, you can figure out how to do almost anything using YouTube videos. But YouTube does have some limitations as a learning platform and you might find that you spend months trying to figure out how to do something that you could actually have learned in days or weeks. And so if you're the type of person who wants to accelerate this process or get a deeper understanding, then you might wanna check this out. You can go to asherdiy.com slash bootcamp or click the link in the description below. Now with that said, let's get back to Lightburn. All right, I've got Lightburn opened up here and now I'm going to show you where to find and how to set up your interval test. So if we go up to the top menu here, there's a section called laser tools. We'll open that up and then we'll find here interval test and we'll open that up. 
So this is gonna give us a little dialog box here, and we have a few settings to put in to get this set up. So first things first, we have speed and power, and this is pretty simple, because we're just gonna punch in the exact numbers that we got from our previous material test. So if you recall, we had 10,000 millimeters per minute and 80% power, so I'm just gonna enter those here, and as you can see, it's already entered. And then steps is just simply the number of tests that it's going to run, and so I'll show you the preview here. I have seven steps entered in and so that's going to give me one two three four five six seven different tests to compare so now i'll close the preview and here on the right hand side we have our minimum and maximum interval and this requires a little bit of explanation so let's get into that right here generally speaking as sort of a, a broad principle your interval that is going to be sort of the ideal interval is going to be pretty close to the spot size of your laser Okay, and so for example, a diode laser like this 10 watt D1 Pro I'm, I'm running here has a rectangular spot size that is 0 0.06 by 0 0.08 millimeters. And so just as a starting point for setting up the minimum and the maximum interval for this sort of test, I like to use that spot size as sort of my midpoint. So for example, I just mentioned that the spot size for my diode laser that I'm running for some of these tests here is 0 0.06 by 0 0.08. And so for my minimum, I'm just going a little bit under 0 0.06 to 0 0.04. And for the maximum, I'm going a little bit above my maximum point on my spot size, which is 0 0.08. So I'm jumping up here for a 0.1 max interval. Now on a CO2 laser, you're going to get probably just one number for your spot size if you get it from your manufacturer or if you just Google it and find it that way. That's because like on a CO2 laser, it's typically going to be a circular spot size. Let's say just for example, you get a spot size for your CO2 laser that's 0.1. Okay, well in that case, if I was setting up this test, probably what I would do is put a minimum interval of just a little bit below that, which would be around 0 0.08, and a little bit above, which would be somewhere around 0 0.12. So hopefully you're kind of tracking that logic. So for setting up this test, just to summarize, I would find the spot size of the actual machine that I'm using, and then for my minimum, I would go a little bit under that spot size. And for the maximum, I would go a little bit above it. Then for size, this is just simply the size of those tests we saw in the preview. So it's just the physical space that these squares will take up. I like to go fairly large because it just makes it easier, I think, to see how the results are going to turn out. And so for that, I do 15 millimeters. Now, the last real setting here is simple fill and dithered image. For this type of test, I basically always use simple fill, so I won't go into that too much more. And then we have some control buttons, the preview we've already seen, there's a frame, and then you can start your job here. And by the way, if you're wondering how this interval test window here determines where inside your working area to actually place the test, that is actually going to be tied to the settings in your laser menu here. For example, I here have current position and a middle job origin specified here. So I just wanted to quickly mention that this interval test is going to place the test according to these other settings. And if you need more information about the different start from and job origin options, then you can check out my Lightburn 101 video that goes into that in more detail. So now that we've walked through the setup of this test in Lightburn and I've run it here on my piece of plywood, it becomes a matter of just choosing the interval option that we like best. And so since we're talking about the darkness of the engraving, we're just gonna choose the one that we like best and here again, it is a little bit of a subjective process. So you might say, hey, 0 0.04 looks good because it's the darkest, but it also happens to be a little bit uneven. As you can see, there's dark marks here and here. And so personally, out of all of these, I actually like the 0 0.06 option. It's pretty dark, but it also is nice and even. And so I'm gonna go with that one. Your preference again might vary, but that's what I'm gonna go with for the next test. Now, if we take the power and speed settings that we got from our material test and the interval that we got from our interval test, and we put those together on one engraving, then we're gonna get something that looks like this DIY text here, which is using those settings. Now, you can see we get a really nice even engraving, and it also happens to be fairly dark brown. And if this is the shade that you're going for, then the good news for you is you really don't need to do anything else. You can just use these two tests and get results that look basically like this. But if you want something darker than this, there's actually a really easy trick that you can use to make this a lot darker, literally with just the press of a button. So let's get to that next. All right, here we are in Lightburn, and now I'm just gonna quickly show you how to find that little toggle button where you can just click it and basically your engraving will immediately get darker. And then I'll explain a little bit about how it works. So first things first, I have 
have my little DIY here, and it is on this layer that I can see in my cuts and layers menu here. And I'm gonna start by just double clicking on that to open up my cut settings editor. Now here you'll find pretty much all the normal settings for a layer like this. You have the name, power and speed settings, and so on. But we're also gonna find a couple other things. And most notably, we're gonna find this little toggle button right here called crosshatch. And this is the setting that we're gonna use to immediately darken our engravings. But before we turn it on, I wanna just quickly explain what it's going to do because that'll help you understand why this works. What you'll see over here, this is gonna help us understand, this is showing us the direction of our engraving. It's basically just giving us an illustration that shows it's gonna go side to side. And if you tweak this setting here, you can see that for the scan angle, if I change this to 90 degrees, we can make it go up and down. We can basically make our engraving go in whichever direction we want. As you might be able to imagine, just kind of thinking about this, the most even and the darkest engraving would actually be a combination of multiple directions. So going up and down and side to side, because that's going to give us sort of a grid pattern or like a plaid pattern, if you will, which will give us the darkest and most even engraving possible. And that's essentially what the crosshatch feature is going to do with for us. So now watch this little illustration while I come over here and I click this crosshatch button. Now you can see that it's giving me these engraving lines in both directions, and that's what's going to give us those nice, dark, and even engravings. And I'm really surprised that I haven't actually seen, I don't think, anybody else talking about this on YouTube because it's such a useful feature that can really give you a lot darker engravings. But anyway, uh, we're gonna see a little bit more about this as we move on to, uh, back to our test board. Now we're back at our test board and we can see the original engraving here. And now what I'm about to show you is the same engraving with only one thing changed and that is simply turning the crosshatch feature on. So I think you'll be able to tell here on camera that what we have with the crosshatch over here is quite a bit darker than our original engraving. And that's good news, but you might also be able to tell that it's a decent bit deeper. And the reason for that is it's basically doing two passes in this case, one in one direction and one in the other direction. But we can actually compensate for this by adjusting the power and speed. So if we were going to use crosshatch, we might, for example, increase the speed or decrease the power or a combination of the two. And I'll actually show you an example in a couple moments here where I have increased the speed to adjust for that depth a little bit. But first, I wanna show you one more tweak that you can make to further darken your engraving if you're still not happy with your results. And that will be revealed down here under the blue post-it notes. And this is an additional test that I did of different focus points of the laser. So you may or may not be surprised to learn that the darkness of your engraving is actually really significantly impacted by how your laser is focused to the material that you're using. For example, here on the left-hand side, my laser is in focus, and we'll talk about how to do this in a moment. And then I have defocused it one, two, three, and four millimeters. And because the word defocus is a little ambiguous, just to clarify, what I've done is I've taken the focus and I've moved the laser farther away by one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, and four millimeters. And so if you're just thinking about the laser head, I've moved it up farther away from the wood to get these defocus points. And you can see just by looking this, I think, you'll be able to tell that some of these are significantly different darknesses. And if you were looking to do a test like this on your own, I should mention that different lasers do this differently, but if you're using a manually focused laser like I did for this, I have found that a stack of three business cards is roughly equal to one millimeter. And so I just stack three business cards for one millimeter and then six business cards for two millimeters to help me raise my focus up using the built-in manual focusing tool here on my laser. As I said, different machines will do this differently, but I think that will give you an idea. And after going through this process and testing each different focus level with my laser, I found that my favorite for the darkness was actually right here in the middle, two millimeters. You may be able to tell on camera that it's a little bit darker than what we're getting for our other options. And so that's what I'm gonna go with going forward. So now if we take everything that we've learned so far in this video and we put it together for one engraving, then what we get is gonna look something like what's here under the yellow post-it note. In this engraving here, we have used the two millimeter defocus that we saw, we used crosshatch, we used our 0 0.06 interval, we used 80% power. The only thing that I've changed here is I have increased the speed from 10,000 to 14,000 millimeters per minute to address the depth that's brought in by the crosshatch that we talked about when we were up here. So I've increased the speed to make the depth 
a little bit less, a little bit shallower in the engraving while still getting some nice dark color here. And if I bring it up to the camera, I think you can tell that it's a really dark brown color. And in fact, if I bring in our original piece that we saw at the beginning of the video, the settings and method I used here is exactly the same as what we used to get this dark engraving here in the middle. But that really only shows you how to get this middle dark engraving. So at this stage, you might be wondering, well, that's great, but how do I get a really nice light engraving like this? Or how do I get that black engraving over there? And I will show you both. Let's first talk about the light engraving because it basically uses the same process that we went here. You could get a light engraving like this by using especially these first two tests, the power and speed and the interval. And instead of choosing ones that were dark, just simply choosing lighter colors on both options and then combining those to get a light engraving like this. That's the basic process. And really, if you're going for something light, you don't really need the rest of these steps. You don't need cross hatch. You don't need to defocus. You don't need any of that. So actually getting a light engraving like this is the easiest step. And so the next thing we're gonna cover is how do you get these true black engravings like this over here. But before we go on to that, I do want to reveal what is under this uh, green post-it note that you might be wondering about because this may be something that you run into while you're experimenting with this. So let me go ahead and pull that off. And what you're gonna see is I have done a line engraving. And so if you're not familiar with what I mean, in Lightburn, you have basically two options for the engraving type. You have a line and you have a fill. And what we've been doing here, all of these tests basically just apply to fill. If you are doing a line engraving and you want it to be darker than what you're getting, then basically you have two options. You either are going to mess with the things in the material test, that's gonna be your main resource, or you're gonna use one of the methods that we're going to cover next in this video. Now, if you wanna get true black engravings, then you've got a couple of options. The first one is to use some kind of wood treatment, and the most popular of these treatments is using borax. This is a really simple process. You just mix one part borax and 10 parts warm water, and in my case, I just used an old plastic measuring cup and literally just did one scoop of borax and 10 scoops of warm water. You stir it up and then brush it onto the wood with a foam brush, or I know some people also like to do this with a spray bottle instead. But make sure you let the wood fully dry before engraving because it works way better when it's dry. It's pretty easy to tell when it's dry because the wood will look much lighter than when it's wet, and the good news is that it doesn't take very long, probably probably around 30 minutes, depending on how thick you put on the water mix. Then you just do your engraving using your same settings as before, and this is how it looks. And as you can tell, there is a clear difference between the dark brown that we can get on the right without borax and the true black that we get with the borax treatment on the left. But I think it's worth mentioning that there are four potential downsides of the borax method. The first is that it smudges a lot more than a regular wood engraving. And for this reason, you may want to put some sort of protective clear coat over the top to protect it and prevent smudging in your finished project. And for number two, as I understand it, borax is not food safe. And so if you're doing cutting boards or some other food surface, then you might need to avoid using borax or find some safe way of coating over the borax to prevent the food actually from coming into direct contact with it. I personally don't do any food surfaces in my shop at the moment, and so I haven't really looked into this in detail. So if you are an expert on this, feel free to leave some notes in the comments below for other people to benefit from. But otherwise, just know that borax could be dangerous for food surfaces. Fourth and finally, it is an extra step to do the borax method, which means it's gonna take a little bit of extra time. And so if you're doing this for a business or a side hustle, that is basically costing you a little bit of money in a way every time you do it. So that's just something to keep in mind. And apparently I can't count because when I originally recorded the video, I forgot to include point number three. But anyway, the third con is that even though it's pretty easy to find in a lot of parts of the US, borax can be really tricky to find internationally. And I know we do have some international viewers out there, so I just wanted to mention that. And before we move on to the last method of darkening your engravings, I wanted to quickly mention that another way that you can modify your wood and thus get different color and look of engravings is simply to change the species of wood that you're using. So for example, in this video, I've been mainly using maple wood, but if you were to switch to something like cherry or walnut, the engravings would look a bit different. And if you're not yet satisfied with any of the engraving darkening methods we've talked about so far in this video, then you're in luck because there is one more method that you could consider using that will allow you to get brown, black, or even blue colored engravings. And that's to use paint filling as I've done for these projects you see here. These are just a few examples of the colors that you can get for your engravings with paint filling. And if you'd like to try this for yourself, you can see the full process of how I made each of these paint filled projects in this tutorial that I'll put here on the screen. So just click or tap on that little card there and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye now.